me ask you something real quick. So what's your name? Jack who? Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Sister Jacqueline. What's the what's the top nation on the face of the planet? According to the Bible. You a Christian? Not really, you're a Christian? Can walk through. Not really? Can walk through. Okay. What's the top nation? Let me ask you like this. Y'all yeah. go to church? No, 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 okay. Never been to church? Never been to church? That's a public sidewalk. Y'all look good. Huh? Thank you. So what do you believe now? You believe in God, but don't go to church. What about you? Believe in God, but don't go to church. Okay, what do you look like? You know what he look like? Dark features. You agree with that? Okay, so God got dark features, right? That's right. Okay. What What would be, of, of all the nations, you believe in nations, right? Various nations and races and things like that. Okay, who would be the top nation of all those races, all those nations? Mm -hmm. What comes to mind? What's your name? Jonathan. Jonathan. Okay, Jonathan. Let's just look out in the world. Let's just deal with America. In America, what's the top nation that runs America? Yes. White people, but I would say a certain. Why are you saying but, bruh? It's a certain group. White nah, man. No. What, you, what do you say? No, you say white people. Just leave it at that. Huh? You say white people? Okay, who's at the bottom in America, starting with you? Black people. What do you say? You agree with that, right? So it's, it, it, it's, there's some conflicts going on right now because you have one nation, one race of people that's at the top, and then you have another nation, another race of people at the bottom. Is there any any equality between those two races? No, there's no equality, right? But when you read the Bible, give me Deuteronomy 7, you already got it. But when you read the Bible, there's no equality with God either. That, right. that same God that's got the dark features, there's no equality with him either. Right. Read this real quick. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter seven, verse six. Bring it out. For thou art an holy people, Unto the Lord thy God. You know who that you know who that people is that, that Moses is talking about right now? Who's that people? On that sign right there. Go to one and one. Let's show you real quick. When you look at that sign and you see those 12 tribes right there, those are special people. Those are God's chosen people. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Bring it out. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. These are the words that's Mo that Moses is speaking to. All Israel. To the 12 tribes right there in the sign. You see the sign, Jonathan? Those are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So when we go back to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. God says, those are holy people unto himself. That's what God said. And you see yourself on the sign, right? Jonathan, you see yourself on the sign? Come on. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. Ah! The Lord thy God hath chosen my sister Jacqueline, right? Hath chosen my sister Jacqueline. Read that part again. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. The Lord God chose you to do what? To be a special people unto himself. To be a special people unto himself. Those same people that are at the bottom that y'all said is in America right now, God said what? There are what? For the Lord that God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Those same people that are in a lower state that are getting free phones and tablets right now, that are cracked out, drugged out, and everything else on the street, God said those are chosen people to himself. God said those are special people to him. Come on. Above all did that say equal to? Did it say below? Jesus. What did it say, Sister Jacqueline? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon preaching, thee preaching. and overtake thee. A curse. Is a curse a good or a bad thing? It's a bad thing, right? 
So God said, if the children of Israel, that's how right there, point to the side. Ezekiel, listen, point to the side right there. The 12 tribes, 12 tribes. God said, if those people will not listen to observe and to do his commandments, all these what? All these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So we all agree that a curse is a bad thing, right? Now watch this, verse 48. So Let's read one of the curses because you said the there's a system in place, right? There's a system in place that was set up by a specific race or nation of people. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. God said we would serve the children of Israel, the people on their side. We would serve our enemies. Come on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Which God sent against us. So guess what? It ain't nothing personal against us. You personally, yeah. You may not have no power personally, but guess what? God used your race to punish his people, his children, right. the children of Israel. So nothing personal against you. I don't even know you. But your race, your nation, was used to punish, to judge God's children, God's people. Come on. And in nakedness, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So God used the so-called white man and sent them against his people. Jeez. Why? Because we broke God's commandments. Right. We were supposed to be above all the nations on the face of the planet. Right. That was supposed to be our faith, our destiny. To be above all the other nations on the face of the planet. Yes. Right. God said, you don't want to do what I, what I tell you to do? You don't want to serve me? Guess what? I'll make you serve all the other nations. Right. And guess what? In those lands where you serve those other nations, y'all ain't going to know what the hell is going on. You don't know if it's a woman. You don't know if it's a man walking down the street. What am I talking about? Transgenders? Right. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know if, you, I don't know if it's a she, he, or a he, she. Right. That's the type of confusion that would happen in the lands of your captivity. Read that part again, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Notice how I said enemies, not friends, buddies or pals. God said your enemies. Come on. In hunger. For food. And in thirst. For water. And in nakedness. For the clothes on your back. For the clothes on my back. Yeah, it might have an, an emblem on there, but guess what? I I cannot physically produce this shirt. I gotta go to China. Right. Have the have ninety percent of the stuff in your house come from where? China. Come from China. Right. We gotta serve the other nations for the want of all things, including the clothes on our back. Come on. And in want of all things, including a phone, including a tablet. These curses. This Bible is a true book. The Bible is the realest book on the face of the planet. That's why, right. because it prophesied thousands of years ago that the children of Israel in Dallas, Texas, they would be serving the other nations for tablets, for phones. Every Saturday we come out here, almost every Saturday, there's what? There's a food truck set up right in this parking lot. And they're giving what? Sandwiches. They're giving out juice and everything else. Why? Because God said you would have to serve all the other nations on the face of the planet for hunger, for food, for water, for nakedness, meaning the clothes on your back, and in want of all things. A driver's license, you gotta serve the other nations. You want a death certificate, you gotta serve the other nations. You want an education, you gotta serve the other nations. And that's not how it's supposed to be from the beginning. God said we're holy people above all the other nations. We've been beat to hell and back here in America. We've been beat to hell and back here in America. And now we do what we beat, we've been beaten so far. So now we suffer from what? Stockholm Syndrome. Bring now up, we think up. that our enemies, we think that our captors are now our friends, our up. buddies, our pals. Now here's the thing, the other nations, we have to use the Christ said, make friends with the mammon of this world, meaning what? You 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 gonna have to be peaceable with the other nations at, at points at points in time. Whether it's at work, whether it's on your uh, uh, at school, your university, whatever the case is. But when it comes to making marriages, building families, and things like that, 
You have to have confidence in your seed, in your stock, in your race. Give me that Ciroc 26. In 19, maybe? 19, 20? Ciroc 26 and 20. I want those two verses. The book of Ciroc, chapter 26 and verse 21. No! 20. When thou hast listen, 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 listen. Come on, come on. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession through all the field, sow it with thine own seed. What? With thine own seed. Sow it with your own seed. Meaning, a brother that implants seed in you with seed sperm. A man that gets you pregnant, aka your husband. God says, do it with who? Sow it with thine own seed. Sow it with your own people. Your own people. Bring it on. God chose us above all the other nations. Why are we settling for less? There's no rhyme or reason. Slavery, yes sir, yeah, hold that. Slavery only happened to who? Bring it on. Thank you. Slavery happened to the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. I'd be damned if I want to mix and mingle with other races, nations, and people that didn't even go through the same atrocities, the same destruction that my people went through. Bring it up. I want to come up from the bottom with my own people. Come on. Trusting in the goodness of thy stock. Trust in the goodness of your stock, Sister Jacqueline. Trust in the goodness of your stock. Come on. That's right. So thy race, which thou leavest. So thy what? So thy race. The Bible talks about race. That's the Bible right. does talk about race. So thy what? Right. So thy race, which thou leavest, shall be magnified. Shall be what? Magnified. Guess what? Our race is magnified above all the other races, all That's the other right. nations, all the other people. That's right. Our race. That's right. You just forgot. That's it. You forgot that you were above all the other nations. That was in your spirit. You understood that at one point in time, Sister Jacqueline. You understood that at one point in time. You got to come back to the remembrance of who you are. You're an Israelite according to the Bible. That's right. You greater than everybody else. That means you got to, you got to, it, it's got to be in your conduct. It's got to be in your speech. You got to, guess what? You, what do you think about these brothers? You think we all married or we all single? And to me, I think we should celebrate our differences. Huh? Okay, we married? You, you're 100% correct. Who you say we married to? There you go. Why? Huh? Well, we love our people. There you go. And because God said we got to sow seed of our own. That's right. Our own seed. Come on. Having the confidence of their good descent. Because our descent is good. Our descendants are good. The descendants of the children of Israel are good. Why? Because we keep God's commandments and the faith of his son, Jesus Christ. Because the only people that's going to understand our struggle is who? Our own people. That's it. That's it. You understand that, Sister Jacqueline? You got any questions, Sister Jacqueline? Question. No? Do you believe it, Sister Jacqueline? Huh? All praise when you love your people? All praise to the most high. So now what you so what you think you gotta do now? It's your boyfriend? Uh, that's from my, from my understanding of what I've seen. Okay, there was your boyfriend. All praise to the most high. She said that was her boyfriend. Y'all give it up for the sister. Sister Jack. All praise to the most high. She said it was her boyfriend, but now because she understands God's laws, she understands God's laws and she understands that she has to magnify her race. She has to bring forth seed of her own race. That's a holy seed. Get that for us. Second Ezra 8 and 69. I mean, first Ezra. First Ezra 8, 69. First Ezra 8, 69. Real quick. And then, come, and then uh, you got it. First Ezra 8, 69, 7. First Ezra chapter 8 and verse 69. The nation of Israel, the princes, the priests and Levites have not put away from them the strange people of the land. So we didn't put from us the strange people. The Bible said this is the, this is the Israelites. He said they didn't put away the strange people of the land. 
Let's see those strange people up. Come on. Nor the pollutions of the Gentiles to wit of the Canaanites, Hittites, Pharisites, Jebusites, and the Moabites, Egyptians, and Edomites. And Edomites. Edomites today, or Edom, E-D-O-M, the descendants of Esau, that's the so-called white man today. God said those are strange people. Those are strange people. God said you're holy. God said you're righteous. Why would you want to be with something that's strange? Why would you want to? Why would you want to? Because think about it. Is God a man or a woman? He's a man, right? And you said he's got dark features, right? Okay, that's biblical, Daddy. That's biblical. Jesus Christ. You know they changed Tom based on his birth? You know that? Did you know that? Huh? You heard about it? You remember BC? And then it changed to AD and then time changed. Right? That was based on his birth. So that was a very that was a very was. That is a very powerful man. Any man that's born in the earth and time changes because of his birth, he gotta be pretty pow uh, powerful, right? Right? You, you, under, you, you believe that? Okay, watch this. The book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 9. Bring it out. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. You know who the Ancient of Days is? That's the Heavenly Father. That's God. The Ancient of Days, meaning he was before days. He was before Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 24 hours of the day. He was before that. Come on. Even now, he doesn't dwell in time. Come on. Whose garment was white as snow. And his so it says his garment was white as snow. In order for you to have a garment on, you got to have a what? You put it on what? You put a garment on a, a body, right? So the Heavenly Father has what? A body. It's not a puff of smoke in the air. He's sitting on the throne. He's got a body. Come on. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. Okay, watch this. Wool. You know what wool is? What is wool? It's the hair on what animal? It's the hair on a sheep animal. A sheep, right? So it's describing the Heavenly Father's hair. It looks like the same type of hair and the same texture of hair that would be on a sheep. What race of people do you know today have the type of hair that's very similar to the hair on a sheep? Oh, snap! Oh, snap! How about your hair? That's why my sister's smiling. She is bearing witness in the spirit. God said in the Bible that the same type of hair that he has, you got on your head right now. That's the sheep right there. Look at my sister right here. It's got a face black. I thought that was you. Yes. You see this hair right here? This woolly hair. This is hair black folks. The Heavenly Father is a dark skinned black man. That's right. And he created you and me and all these brothers right here. Come on, was that it on that? Go to, go to 10. 10 and 5. Now watch this, Sister Jacqueline. I mentioned about that, that famous man that walked the planet. Jesus Christ. What did he look like? Huh? Probably looked the same, right? Let's see. I, I, I ain't gonna say it. You said it. Watch this. The book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 5. Oh and I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphrates. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his arms and his feet light in color to polished brass. Sister Jacqueline, the Bible talks about color. It said his feet, this is talking about Jesus Christ, his feet and his arms, meaning what? You can see the skin on his, on his legs, and then you can see the skin on his arms. It said it looked like polished brass. What color is brass? Brass. B-R-A-S-S. -S. Gold, okay, gold, okay. Like a brown, gold color, right? So it said, it look, I got you, it looked like it was polished, right? Polished brass, now watch this. When you look look at this right here, this is the brass you're talking about, right? That's brass. It said it was polished. When you look up the word polished, that just means burned. 
burn grass. Right. So if you were to burn this in a fire, what color would it come out? Black. Huh? If you burn this, if, like if you lit a match to it, and you took the match off, what color would it turn? It wouldn't stay this color. Black. What color would it turn? Gold. It would turn, yeah, it would turn black. Somebody else said it. would turn black. It would turn dark skin. So Jesus Christ looked just like his heavenly father. Dark skinned men with afros. That's right. Just like, just like your hair, Jesus Christ had the same hair. Let's read that in the New Testament. Revelation 1, 14. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. What, what we're doing right now, my sister, is we're giving you, we're, we're trying to show you and build your confidence in your race. In your race. Because for how long have we seen a white Jesus, white angels, a white God, angel food cake is good, uh, angel food cake is good, black cake is bad. You the black sheep of the family. What does that mean? Huh? The odd one out? Yeah, you the black, yeah, you the black sheep. Yeah, you the bad one. You the probably got locked up a, a hundred times. Why can't be the white sheep of the family that got locked up? Hey, bring it up. But the black one? Come on. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. This is a Jesus, Jesus Christ, the hair on his head and the hair on his beard was white like what? Wool. Like wool. Did we just read that about the heavenly father? Come on. As white as snow. And his eyes were Watch this. Watch this. Slow down. And you see that brother's hair right there? You see that? You see that wool he got? But you see the white in his hair? That's what this is talking about. Come on. As white as wool. White like wool. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So Sister Jacqueline, the whites of Jesus Christ's eyes was red. You looking like your uncle? Look at this brother right here. What what does the whites of his eyes look like? Yeah, look at the white parts of his eyes. They're what? They're red. That's what Jesus Christ's eyes look like. The whites of his eyes were red. It's not like he had fire coming out of his eyes. But the whites of his eyes were red. Come on. And his feet. So now watch this, Sister Jacqueline. It says what? And his what? And his feet. And his feet. What type of, of, of footwear were they wearing at this time? Sandals, right? It said, so John the Revelator could see Jesus Christ's feet, right? The skin on his feet, because he had sandals on. It said what? And his feet. And, slow down. And his feet, the skin on his feet, like unto fine brass. What color was that brass? Brown. As if they burned in a furnace. As if. It compared, John the Revelator compared his feet to brass or brown as if, or in comparison to, it being burned in a furnace. Yeah. Or if burn anything in a fire in a furnace, what color does it come out? If, you, if a house burns down, what does that wood look like? Burn like, and it turns what color? Black! Yes. Black! Black! So guess what? Jesus Christ was a dark, Skin black man with a white afro that looked like yours. That's what Jesus Christ looked like. So we try to build your confidence up in your race. Right. The Most High God, His Son, the angels—they're all black. They're all black. All of them, from the Old Testament to the New. This Bible was written to you and for you. We try to wake you up in these last days to who you are. Teacher. You're not a Negro, you're not black or African American. You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. So you gotta have confidence that the Most High God, Jesus Christ, the angels, and all your brothers out here, we out here for you to wake you up. Especially these last days, because guess what? America's coming to an end by nuclear destruction. NATO is going to burn America down by nuclear fire. All their, all their so-called allies, nope, they're going to turn their back on them. Bring it out. They're going to turn their back on them, trust me. That's biblical prophecy. How do we know it's going to come to pass? Because just like this happened, as it was prophesied in 2868. Just like, because what are these? What is this right here? You know what that is? That's a slave ship, right? Is that in the Bible? Are you sure? Huh? 
You got so watch this. Remember, we're gonna go back. I'm gonna I'm 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 get with you. We're gonna go back to 28, because remember, we read about those what? Those curses, right? We read about the curses. Watch this. Go to 49 first. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, uh -huh. from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagles fly. Watch this. What is America's symbol? What's the symbol for America? The eagle, right? Read that book. Read it again. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. God said, I'm going to send a nation against you from far. Come on. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. As swift as what? The eagle flies. As swift as the eagle. The eagle. America's symbol is what? The eagle. That's right. And they took it from their forefathers, they ain't the Romans. Was that it on the verse? I just want that verse. I just want that verse. Verse, is that it? verse 68. Now watch this. Watch this. He said, I'm going to send a nation against you from far, as swift as the eagle flying. So when America came over and took black folks from the west coast of Africa and brought them to this side of the world, what was the mode of transportation? Ship, right? Verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Let's, let's, let's see what this eagle did. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. When it says Egypt, it's not talking about ancient Egypt. Because watch this, give the sign back. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. The pyramids are synonymous for what in what area? Egypt, right? Why does America have a pyramid on the back of their dollar bill? Because this is spiritual Egypt right here. This is Egypt. This is the Egypt that the Bible is talking about right now. Keep that sign up. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Because the children of Israel in ancient Egypt, when you go back to Exodus, they were doing what in ancient Egypt? They were serving as slaves. They were serving as slaves. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Or into slavery or into bondage again. By what mode of transportation? With ships. With ships. With ships. With ships. Watch this. What race of people went into slavery by way of slave ship? Black folks. That's right. Black folks went into slavery by way of slave ship. The Bible said Egypt, America's telling you who they are. Spiritual Egypt. Every time you spend your dollar, they remind you of who they are. Right. Spiritual Egypt. Read that part again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. God said, I'm going to send you into bondage or into slavery by way of slave ship. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. You're not going to see your homeland, Jerusalem, again. Right. Come on. And there. And there where you got off the slave ships. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. This is a so-called white man. These are auction blocks. Your Wall Street. That was an auction block. Right. That was a slave marketplace. Break them up. There's much blood under the streets of, of Wall Street in New York right now. Bring it out. It says in there, Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Cash. Highest price for men, women, and children. You see this auction block right here? It says in there where you got off the slave ship, you would be sold unto your enemies. Look at your movies, Roots, Django, 12 Years a Slave, Amistad, y'all help me out. I'm missing something. Goodbye, Uncle Tom. Birth of a Nation. It depicts everything that the Bible is prophesying. It says in there you be sold into your enemies. For bond men, for slave men, and bond women, and slave women. And no man shall buy you. And no man will save you or redeem you. The only one that will save us out of America is Jesus the Christ. That's the right. same black man that's, that is painted to be a white man. Bring it out. 
But according to the Bible, he looked like you, he looked like me. He looked like these men. So you gotta have that confidence of your race. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is you. And finally, my brother, Mr.